Hello, everyone. Welcome to the FPA virtual lounge event featuring our criminology and criminal justice program. My name is Stanley Philippe. I'm a member of the undergraduate recruitment office here at Carleton U. I want to thank you all for tuning in uh, to the first of a series of amazing uh, faculty lounges. The idea with our events is to give you a more intimate, uh, up close, personal look into what will hopefully become your future program of choice. And uh, tonight is a great way to start things off with our criminology and criminal justice program, one of the more popular areas uh, of study uh, here at Carleton U. Now you're gonna get a chance to uh, hear from uh, a couple of really great folks, uh, uh, a, uh, the director of the Criminology and Criminal, Criminal Justice uh, Institute, as well as a recent graduate of the Criminology program. But we also want to hear from you. And so if this is your first time attending a uh, Microsoft Teams event uh, with us here at Carleton, uh, you'll want to look for the live Q&A button that will give you a chance to ask questions uh, to us uh, live. And what we'll do is we'll uh, do our best to answer those questions uh, that you have uh, either during the event or shortly uh, thereafter. Um, but we'll make sure to get your questions answered before you leave uh, this evening. So please um, have your voice heard and um, use that live event Q&A to ask us the questions you might have about this amazing program. OK, so uh, to start off, uh, I would like to uh, welcome uh, to the screen uh, a person who has uh, a wealth of experience uh, with our criminology program and someone that you're going to want to be uh, very familiar with because he's going to be one of your many, many professors uh, in your first year. And so again, great pleasure to welcome to the screen the director of the Institute of Criminology and Criminal Justice, Nicholas Carrier. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nicolas Carrier. Thanks, Dan. Um, actually, you won't see me next year because I will be on sabbatical. But like after that, like if you do get into the program, you're uh, you may end up at, uh, in one of my classes. Um, so I'm not too sure about like what kind of details you received about the program during your day today uh, with this recruitment event. Um, I'm happy to chat a bit about uh, the first year, but like I'm gonna keep it like uh, very short uh, so that Emily can can speak about like the two, the student side of things, but also um, to to give you the opportunity to ask a lot of questions uh, because my understanding was that this would be more uh, a dynamic uh, moment where you get to ask questions and we can uh, answer your questions. Um, so yes, criminology is a very, very popular program. We have like over 1600 uh, students, which make us like one of the biggest uh, BA in the Faculty of Public Affairs. Um, we uh, we have a very peculiar program in that like it, it is very structured. So in the first year, you don't get to uh, to pick many options. Uh, we want you to be introduced to uh, very different perspectives uh, on criminology and criminal justice, but we're also uh, an interdisciplinary program. So we want to send you in sisters unit in the Department of Psychology, in the Department of Sociology and, Le and Anthropology, and also in the Department of Law and Legal Studies, where you're going to get uh, introductory classes to uh, all these disciplines which all contribute to criminology because criminology is mostly like a um, like it's not really a discipline it's more like a field it's a point of contact between very different perspectives as I said so the first year it's mostly for you to uh, get to know what does it mean to approach the kind of questions we ask in criminology from a legal psychological and sociological perspective um, so there's a lot of material to cover. Introduction to criminology and criminal justice will be among uh, your mandatory course in the first year and it's likely to be the most interesting one for you if you're uh, registering in our program. Uh, so it's a monster class. It's uh, it's a quite demanding course and there's a, there's a bit of adaptation uh, to university life uh, that comes with that. Emily, I suppose we'll talk about this a bit. Um, but basically what we're going through uh, in introduction to criminology and criminal justice are the big questions we ask, the kind of like the three objects that we uh, study in criminology, which would be 
uh, crime, criminality, and criminalization. Uh, so we will look at like uh, what is the state of knowledge about uh, crime, its evolution in time and space. Uh, or is there more crime now? Is there less crime? Where is there more crime? Um, is, uh, for example, like people tend to take that big cities are more crime ridden than like uh, rural areas, but like we know that uh, this is not the case. Um, there is a lot of studies trying to connect various um, components or elements of regions to try to explain variations in crime. There's a lot of studies trying to um, connect this to even the weather. Uh, is there more crime in the summer and so on? So that would be the first, uh, the first kind of like um, big, uh, big field of study. What is it we we think we know about uh, about crime in different uh, region and throughout history? Uh, the second big uh, pack of questions that we're asking is about criminality. Uh, are there like um, big differences between individuals who are criminalized uh, compared to those who are not criminalized. Uh, there's a lot of students who are like really interested in, for example, knowledge about like psychopathy. Uh, so that form of criminology tend to be uh, the, the, the reason why uh, many students uh, choose to study in criminology and criminal justice, uh, thanks in part to Netflix. So what is it we think we know about uh, people who have been uh, arrested, criminalized? Uh, do like can we talk? Can we talk about like a uh, a particular personality, a particular criminal personality? Uh, can we predict crime? Can we uh, weigh the, um, the 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 criminality inside an individual? What is it we can do to prevent? Crime. This would be a second pack of like a second uh, uh, package of questions that we'll ask. And so the in the class we will look at like different knowledges or different true claims, looking at trying to identify the causes of crime uh, inside the individual, uh, sometimes even at the biological level. And then the third type of criminology, the third object is criminalization. How is it that uh, we use criminal law? Uh, how come, um, for example, if we take weed, like not so long ago, this was a crime and now in COVID times, this is an essential service. So how, how do we make sense of the evolution of criminal law? What gets defined as a crime, but also who gets treated as criminal? So we know that like, uh, the criminal justice system tend to focus on particular populations that tend to be racialized and marginalized. So what is it we think we know about the ways in which we use criminal law and what are the consequences of that? So these would be like the big three questions uh, of criminology, what we know about crime, about criminality and about criminalization and Entrocrim is going to like uh, provide an overview of the, the knowledge on this. Um, so on that note, I'll pass the mic to Emily, but uh, I see that there's a lot of questions popping up, popping up in the Q&A, so I'll be uh, more than happy to answer them later. And Thank you so much, Nicholas. Yeah, so what we'll do, folks, is we'll get uh, Emily in here to say a, a few words about the student experience, but we're loving all the questions that you are asking and keep those questions coming because we'll bring Nicholas back uh, at the end of today's event to answer some of your questions live. Uh, but for now, we're going to bring uh, Emily to the, the screen. And uh, Emily is a, a recent grad of the Criminology and Criminal Justice Program. And uh, she has a lot of really great insight into uh, that first year experience, specifically that transition into uh, CRIM. So uh, Emily, thank you so much for tuning in and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Sen, for having me here. And thank you, Nicholas, for giving us a really good overview of the program. Um, so like Sten said, my name is Emily um, and I graduated from the criminology program in June 2018, so about two and a half years ago. And I remember when I had to decide what I wanted to study and I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to study when I was in grade 12, but I knew that potentially one day um, 
and I wanted to go to law school. And I can even see in some of the comments here that some of you are saying that you want to go to law school, which is awesome. And I really enjoyed uh, reading crime novels. I loved watching documentaries about, you know, high profile uh, serial killers and that kind of thing. So I figured that the criminology program would be uh, an, a great program for me and something where I could really explore my interests and my passions. So coming into Carleton, um, it was it was an exciting time. And in my first year, I got to so in, in your first year, if you're taking a full course load, you'll have five credits, uh, which is equal to 10 classes. And seven of those classes were mandatory credits, so things that I had to take for criminology, and then three of them were elective courses that I got to choose. So um, just to give you an example of what your first year might look like, uh, my first semester I took uh, psychology, like introduction to psychology, um, the first half in first semester, introduction to sociology, uh, law and legal studies, and then I took an English class, which was one of my electives, and I also took an anthropology class, which was one of my electives. And then in my second semester, I had sort of the second part to many of those courses. So um, I had the second part to my my law, my law class, um, psychology, the second part to that, the second part to sociology. Then I had introduction to criminology uh, and then I also had an English class. So it was really cool in first year getting those introductory courses uh, because within our criminology program, you are required to choose a concentration. So I wasn't sure what I wanted to what I wanted to concentrate in, but it was nice that I got to dip my toes in all the areas and, you know, into law and legal studies. Um, we, we really got to dip our toes into the psychology content and sociology as well. And by the end of the, my first year, I realized that my favorite part of criminology and sort of my favorite classes other than the actual criminology courses itself uh, was the psychology class, because that's really where I got to learn about um, you know, crime in terms of the individual. So Nicholas talked a little bit about you're going to be learning about crime from an interdisciplinary, you know, approach. So you're going to be learning about it from a bunch of different lenses. But for me, I really enjoyed learning about it in terms of the offender. So learning about, you know, mental disorders and how that contributes to crime and, you know, looking at, at people who um, who are more marginalized, their, their mental health issues and why they might be uh, motivated to commit crime. And then when I went, you know, when I got into my second year and my third year, things started to get a little bit more specific. So instead of just uh, being in an introductory psychology class, uh, I was in some more specific classes such as, you know, social psychology, um, uh, what else, behavioral psychology. And then in my fourth year, I got to take a couple uh, seminars uh, they were called, I think they were called fourth year seminar and those were very um, specific topics. So my favorite one was one on sex offenders um, and that was really sort of my area of interest was, was things like sex offenders and serial killers. So that's really where I got to do a little bit of research. I got to do projects and I got to do presentations and I remember one particular uh, presentation that I got to do in my fourth year was on Ted Bundy. So um, if you're interested in criminology, maybe you've heard of uh, Ted Bundy. Uh, there's even a documentary about him, a documentary series about him on Netflix, as well as a movie on uh, about him. It, it has Zac Efron in it. So I thought that was really cool that I got to do some projects where I really got to focus in on the things that interested me the most. Uh, so if you're if you're wondering what your course load will look like, hopefully I gave you sort of a good idea of what your first year would look like. And then just know that whatever concentration you choose, um, your classes will become more specific to that area as you uh, you know move throughout your degree. However, you still will take courses from the other areas as well. So I still took uh, sociology classes. I still took law classes. It's just that my focus really honed in uh, on psychology. So. Another thing that I just wanted to talk about was um, the transition from high school to university. So I know that many of you are probably in classes of maybe 30 students or even less, but when I got to university, um, I it was not uncommon for me to be sitting in a lecture hall of upwards of 300 students. So it really does change um, and, and it's, it's a bit of a learning curve. And so a big part of first year is not just the um, you know, the stuff that you're learning inside the classroom, but also learning how you as an individual will learn. So 
I think that um, it's 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 a cool transition. It's a neat one and it does provide a lot of learning experiences. Um, but then as you move throughout your degree, you'll notice that your class sizes get a lot smaller. So, you know, my my classes might have had 300 students in first year, but then in second year, some of them only had 50. And then in third year, some of them only had 20 and they got smaller and smaller, uh, which really allowed for a lot of class discussion and debate which I loved because, you know, there's lots of areas in criminology where, um, you know, there's lots of area for debate and discussion, and I, I really enjoyed that. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what your first year might look like and then what it might look like leading into um, the, you know, later parts of your undergrad. Um, maybe I will just pick some questions here that uh, some of you have asked so that I can I can answer what you. OK, so someone said, Emily, what was your favorite class? Mm, I would say probably my sex offenders class, the one I was just talking about, because uh, each week we were given an assigned reading. We were given, well, a few assigned readings to do, and then we would come back and there was only about 15 students in the class. So I really got to know the other students who, who, who maybe I had seen already in these big lecture halls, but now I was actually getting a more intimate experience with them. Um, and like I said, there were opportunities to do research papers and to focus in on exactly what it was that I wanted to, you know, what it was that interested me. And I also love giving presentations and we had a few opportunities to give presentations in that class. So I would say my fourth year class on sex offenders was my favorite one. OK, so let's see here. Um, someone said, is law school a possibility with this program? Uh, yes, it absolutely is. I know a bunch of my classmates who ended up going on to law school and Carleton, we don't have a law school, but I do know that law school actually um, will take students with a variety of degrees. Um, but if this is something that you're interested in, then absolutely I would say, you know, go the criminology route because in terms of law school, they're really looking for well rounded students who have good grades. Um, so if criminology is something that you're interested in and something that you think you're going to do well in, then I would uh, definitely recommend that this is the path that you follow. OK, so I'll just look for one more question here. Emily, there is um, one uh, specific question for you about um, oh. picking English as an elective as opposed to crim related. So maybe keep about or not about but keep going into that kind of yeah. talk about your uh, your course selection process. Yes. OK, that's a good question. OK, so yeah, I can talk about my course selection in. So like I said, in my first year out of my 10 classes, seven of them were mandatory. So I, I was like they were kind of built into my schedule. I had to take them and those were my, you know, sociology, psychology, criminology, law. Um, but I chose English because and maybe this will resonate with some of you. I chose to take an English class which ended up being it was an entire year. So it was like equivalent to two classes and I chose to take it because I knew that throughout my entire degree I was going to have to, you know, write papers and and like long papers. And I know that, you know, in high school, English is mandatory for us if you're in Ontario, um, but it, it's not mandatory when you come to university. But I really wanted to continue developing my writing skills and I knew that by taking English courses, I would still get the opportunity. And I just thought that, um, you know, taking a course where I'm really focusing a lot on, on reading and writing would you know, it would give me skills that would transfer over into my other classes. And I just thought that it would be um, really beneficial as I moved on uh, throughout my entire degree. So that's a good question. But you can really take um, courses in whatever interests you. So if you're someone who um, is studying criminology, but you, you know, really have a passion for history, let's say, and you want to take a history course, then that's something that you can do. So you're able to explore other areas, which is, is a really nice uh, opportunity for, for students in this program. Awesome. Well, Emily, thank you so much. And there's, there are some more questions uh, for you specifically that you'll find uh, in the chat. So we'll, we'll get you to, to hop on that chat and and keep answering those questions and folks keep those questions coming we're really loving it uh, i'm going to bring uh, nicholas back into the conversation because uh, there were a couple of questions that were asked that i think uh, would be uh, would be useful for nicholas to, to give your perspective on um, specifically there was a, a couple of questions about placements and uh, what type of placements are available what type of um, uh, kind of outside of the classroom experiences can criminology and criminal justice students take advantage of so maybe you can talk a bit more about um, those type of opportunities. OK, thanks, Tim. Um, placements are not are not mandatory in the program. Like there are opportunities that are provided to students. We have like in like pre-COVID times, we would have like 
maybe 70, 60, 70 placement opportunities for uh, for students. Now we're, we're like really working hard to provide like that kind of experience for students this year. Um, there is a variety of organizations that uh, we send students to um, that uh, used to include uh, prison organization and police organizations. We made the decision this year to stop our relationship with these uh, organization for the time being, but we have a lot of like other uh, placement opportunities. Some people uh, go to uh, um, do their placement in law firms. Like uh, like there's a lot of people who come in the program uh, who want to go to law school afterwards. Uh, I'd say like when I teach intro and I have like two, three hundred students, uh, I would say that a good third uh, pick CRIM to uh, to with the project of like after that doing doing law school and there's a lot of support uh, for that and I know that students are very successful in getting into grad school uh, in law school afterwards. Um, but placement opportunities are for like uh, really the best students. We we basically take the the top students who apply based on their uh, grade point average. Uh, so it's a very competitive process. We're trying always to expand. Uh, the uh, placement opportunities, but normally it's like around 60, 70 spots per year. Uh, and it, it's not paid. It's not a co-op, it's a placement. So it provides a lot of like experiential learning and like it's a killer line on your CV, uh, but it's not like a paid uh, opportunity. Um, I saw that people ask questions about a minor also, like many students, uh, like Emily talked about uh, picking a concentration. So in our program, you have to you're doing a BA in CREM, concentrating in either psychology, sociology, or law, and this will tilt a bit like the content of your courses. Emily decided to concentrate in psych, so she had more courses in psychology. Um, so like other options of minor, like I have a student who uh, is doing like history, uh, religious studies, indigenous studies, political science. Uh, there's a lot of options. It really depends on your interest. But um, another question I wanted to address was uh, a question about like this concentration. Like someone asked if it gives you a degree in crim or in law if you're concentrating in law. So the degree is criminology and criminal justice with a concentration. But if you're wanting to go to law school and you have a concentration in psychology, you will be well positioned as well positioned as if you add a concentration in law, because as Emily said, like they're looking for like well rounded student with like competitive grades. So that's a key uh, question. So I don't know, Stan, if it's if it's satisfactory. Yeah, there is another question. I mean, it, and it's great. It feels like we're having some um, some really great conversations centered around, you know, a law school and those kind of pathways, which you touched on uh, talking about the placements, which we had a conversation about, too. And the other one was uh, the concentrations themselves. And so there was someone who asked about when you have to decide your concentration by and 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 whether or not you are kind of, I guess, um, uh, able to to switch or to make a different decision after your first year. So maybe uh, if you can touch a bit more on the, the journey of the criminology student and if their journey brings them to law uh, or to psychology or sociology, how easy is it to kind of uh, switch their tempo after year one? What we're trying to do in year one is to expose students to uh, the three disciplines, the three contributing units. So that's why we, we send students in, in, in psychology, sociology and learn legal studies so they can decide on their concentration after year one. Uh, the program is so tightly structured that it's not super easy to switch concentration. It's not impossible, but like uh, after year one, we ask people to pick. But even if like say you pick psychology, you still have a bunch of courses in sociology and in law uh, that will be common to all people doing a BA in CRIM. Um, there is going to be some flexibility in your electives too, uh, but because we're trying to expose students to these three disciplines, we have like um, not a much of like wiggle room to to switch concentration. It's not impossible. Uh, we've got like a, an amazing uh, staff who's able to advise students as to how to make this happen. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a bit complicated. 
Now, if, if law school isn't what a student wants to do, if that's not their kind of final goal, um, what other um, jobs do we find criminology graduates tend to gravitate towards? What are some of the um, different job outcomes? And maybe also speak to uh, the advantages of being here in, in the nation's capital uh, when we're thinking about studying a program like criminology. Well, we certainly do have a lot of students who end up working for the government, that's for sure. There's a, a bunch of like a research branch in Correctional Service Canada, for example, or the Department of Justice. Uh, where uh, some students end up. There's many, many students are interested in uh, careers in law enforcement. Uh, so we have a lot of students who end up working for police services or even for uh, border agency uh, services. Um, but there's also many students who take a more kind of like a more social work key approach to criminology and criminal justice and who end up working in organizations helping uh, victims of crime, working on pre uh, crime prevention, uh, organization uh, working with youth, uh, for instance. Uh, so th these would be some of the um, um, of the job opportunities that, that are more like directly aligned with our program, but like as the experience of Emily shows, there's there are many kind of futures that are attached to criminology and criminal justice. Yeah, and that's and that's really the beauty of of I mean the Bachelor of Arts in general, but really a program like criminology that touches on so many different important areas and and skill sets that will serve um, students well as they're looking uh, to, uh, to to work, looking at different career. Um, options. So um, I think uh, we've got a, a really good grasp of, of the questions that uh, that were being asked and folks uh, you can please uh, continue to ask uh, those questions and, and we'll again try our best uh, to get those uh, questions uh, answered uh, live. Um, so yeah, so so Emily again, she spoke a bit about her experience in her first year. Nicholas, maybe talk a bit about your experience. What's it been like uh, to be uh, kind of working at Carleton and, and what's kind of your favorite part of of being a member of the criminology department? Well, I did a BA in criminology back in the days at Université de Montréal. And uh, at the time, I just I, I, I was working with people who had like a uh, problematic relationship with uh, with drugs. And uh, my plan was to do a, a clinical master to continue working with uh, people struggling with uh, with um, problematic forms of drug use, uh, but for various reasons it didn't work. And then I, I took the path of research. I was really encouraged by some of my crim profs there to to try to taste research, and I did an MA there. And I never thought I would end up like one day on MS teams, like trying to recruit new students for a crim program. So, uh, like, there are so many things that uh, that happen in life. Like, so, like many students have a clear idea of what they want to do and many students are not quite sure also what they want to do and so my my advice to these students is like if you're interested in question about crime and punishment we are not too sure about like career just yet it's just like pick criminology and criminal justice at least you're going to be like uh, taking courses that are interesting to you and then you're going to discover like new things and then you're going to be able to orient yourself uh, and pick the path that uh, is going to be yours. Um, like uh, Carlton, uh, it's like the Institute of Criminology and Criminal Justice, it's an amazing team. Like we're a small unit, we're only seven uh, core profs dedicated to uh, criminology and criminal justice. We collaborate a lot with, with colleagues in sisters unit. So there's a very dynamic uh, uh, relationship between like various academic units. And I think that students benefit from that because like in most criminology program in other universities, you get like one one flavor, one kind of like um, um, culture of teaching. Whereas like in our case, like uh, uh, you get four, you get criminology, but you also get like law and legal studies, sociology and, anthrop and anthropology and also psychology. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'm answering your questions. Then this is no, you, you definitely, you definitely are. You, know, you definitely are. And and uh, there was uh, another kind of uh, question that, that came in that that may be interesting to talk about, which is, uh, would it be possible to major in psych with a minor in criminology? So uh, is criminology available to students who are not majoring in the program? 
We have a minor in criminology that started this year, but our program is so structured that like they cannot double major. So students cannot do a double major. So that uh, unfortunately for now it's impossible. We're trying to make it uh, possible, but things move slowly. Uh, so right now doing a minor is the only option if you take a BA honors in crim. And I should give some background uh, for those who are who are uh, listening in, who may be wondering, you know, what do you mean by minors or double majors? So the way that our uh, university works is uh, you have uh, access to um, five distinct faculties, uh, which are kind of like your academic houses, and within that you'll find your bachelor's degrees. So uh, we're talking about a bachelor of arts degree uh, with a major in criminology and criminal justice. When you, do, when you have a major, it means that you'll be spending the majority of your time in class uh, and outside as well, uh, focusing on that specific topic. But there are cases where students will want to pair uh, their main area of study with another discipline. And if they're doing that at the same kind of frequency, that's where you'll find um, our double majors or combined honors programs will come into play. And if you're looking to have a smaller kind of sample size of your secondary area of interest, that's where you'll find that minors are in play. So to answer your, the question uh, and to reiterate uh, Nicholas's question uh, or answer, again, you will be able to do a minor in criminology starting this year. So for students that are starting in the fall of 2021, uh, that minor in criminology will be available for you to add on. Uh, but if you're thinking about doing a combined honors or double major, uh, at this point it isn't available. That may change, but for right now, uh, it isn't available because you're getting so much awesome kind of um, uh, access to variety of courses already built in uh, to the criminology uh, degree. So hopefully that that helps for the folks who are listening who may be wondering about this honors major minor talk that that we're having. Um, so Nicholas, there are, are still a lot of great questions that are coming in. Maybe what we'll do is we'll we'll let you go on to the actual Q and A and maybe start answering some questions in the live event Q and A. Um, but I want to say a big thank you to you for uh, spending the uh, evening with us uh, talking about uh, criminology to our future students. Thanks. All right, folks, and so we are uh, quickly coming to uh, the end of the live portion of our event. Um, again, I want to thank uh, Nicholas and Emily for sharing some great insight uh, into our criminology and criminal justice program, but fear not, we are going to stay online with you uh, for the next uh, uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. So if you have more questions, uh, please uh, ask those questions. We'll do our very best to get your questions as soon as possible. Uh, there's been a lot of really great conversations that have been happening uh, on the Q&A side. So uh, again, thank you so much for participating in today's event. Um, uh, the, uh, I guess the FPA virtual lounge is just opening. We have um, a lot of different uh, programs that we're going to be featuring over the next uh, few uh, weeks. So uh, if you haven't uh, applied yet, uh, we certainly encourage you to do so. If you're still curious about the different programs that, uh, that FPA does offer, um, you can tune in at the same time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Tomorrow we'll be featuring our political science uh, department. Uh, on November 18th, our communication and media studies program. And on Thursday, November 19th, our economics degree. So a lot of really great conversations that we have uh, throughout this week and, and into the next few weeks too. So once again, uh, thank you so much for attending. Keep those questions coming. I hope you have a really great evening and uh, thank you so much again for, for checking us out. Take care, everyone.